track Corsair Suite at Computex 2019, and we finally have a look at the Hydro X line. Corsair has been teasing this for over a year now, probably like 18 months. There's CPU blocks, GPU blocks, a pump res combo, and then uh, tubes, fittings, all of that stuff. So we have prices, we have some interesting specs, uh, specifications on the fin pitch, for example, that we'll be going through today, along with material choice and the resistance to coolants. So that's our topic for today. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 AORUS Master Motherboard, which comes equipped with one of the more powerful Z390 VRMs for heavier overclocks on the new 9th gen Intel CPUs. The AORUS Master is also one of the few motherboards with a real heatsink this generation, featuring a mix of high surface area fins and looks oriented cover blocks. Oh, and it's also got updated RGB illumination. Learn more at the link below. So behind me is the Corsair Hydrax series in full. We have a lot of B-roll of this stuff that we'll, we'll cut to, but it's pretty simple. Uh, Corsair is targeting, I, I guess, we've, we've heard two different stories on what audience is being targeted, and one of them is going for the, uh, the user who's a bit more scared of getting into open loop and not offering you a million SKUs that could potentially make it difficult to choose the parts you need for your build. So that's, that's audience number one. Uh, audience number two, I guess we'll, we're, we're still trying to figure out. There's, it's not like there's a lack of performance focus, but to be fair, there's also not a lot you can do in performance with water cooling. It's just like, don't, don't corrode stuff and don't don't leak. That's kind of the main goals. And beyond that, you're talking single digit degree differences, which are often within a margin of error. But uh, let's go through the, the product name, prices, and then we'll get into the interesting specs that we got here at the show. So CPU blocks, there's the XC7 and the XC9. They're $5 apart. It's $75 or $80 for the XC9. The XC9 is reserved for HEDT parts like Threadripper or the Intel HEDT CPUs, XC7 for everything else. Uh, the 9 has an aluminum pump cap and the 7 has a plastic pump cap. There are 16 RGB LEDs on the underside of the pump that point down at the motherboard so you get a bit of an underglow kind of like the car neons approach there's paste pre-applied it's done in a hexagonal pattern which I guess looks cool I'm told that it's for maybe performance but frankly it just it looks cool and that's about it so it's a custom silk screen for that uh, they pre-apply the paste the GPU side of things, it's XG7 for the block. There's no XG9 presently. The XG7 is $150 for the block, and it always has a backlight. So this is where Corsair is trying to do, as I said, uh, a simpler approach for customers who've never actually done water cooling and might be a bit intimidated by it. Uh, so the idea is all the stuff's included now. That does mean you pay a bit more than if you cut some of those features. So kind of up to you whether you want that or not. But the backlight's there. It's got pre-cut pads pre-installed on the GPU, which is, or on the GPU block. So you have uh, all the pads pre-installed. There are some pads missing from the FE uh, cold plate or the block, for example. Now, whether or not those really will become relevant, you'd have to look at in testing. So it doesn't have every single pad that NVIDIA uses on the FE card, so it's not a one-to-one -one match, uh, which does mean that, you, you know, as a customer, you might be kind of looking at it like, well, where's the rest of the pads for the components NVIDIA was cooling? But uh, we'll look at that later. For the most part, they are cooling the MOSFETs on the core V-Core and uh, VMEM, so you're, you're hitting most of the really important stuff. We'll just have to look beyond that for everything else. Uh, so XG7 pre-cut pads, pre-installed. Pump Res has a temp monitor and an end cap fitting. It is a thermistor. This is something we've seen in pretty much every end cap fitting for the, uh, for it, it's, it's not an inline temp monitor, which is what I really want to see because most of the ones out there suck and Corsair with the focus on not leaking would be a, a, a good candidate for making one of those. There's a flow indicator on the GPU. It's not a, a flow monitor but or measurement, but an indicator. And then the main, prices, uh, I think I, I went through a few of them. The XD5 pump res combo is $155. The XG7 is to be $150, plus or minus a bit, depending on which card you're cooling, like the Strix, for example, versus the FE. And uh, then the radiators are, well, plenty. You can see behind me, there's skinny 120s up to 420s. The uh, soft tubing is, uh, you've got 14 and 12 for outer, for hard, or for hard line, then for soft, you have 12 and 10 for the diameters. Um, there's a, let's see, let's talk about the specs that I got in a side room here. So the GPU fin pitch, 0 0.25 millimeters, and uh, this is done by Skyving. We have shots of Skyving machines from our factory tours previously, at, actually at a Cooler Master factory. Skyving's a really slow process, but it's still faster than CNC. -ing. And uh, with Skyving, you can do something like eight uh, cold plates, maybe six of them in the time that you'd CNC a cold plate. But the fin pitch is a big, uh, a big impact to how long that takes. Wow, it's really loud in here. Uh, 0 0.25 millimeters. Millimeter fin pitch though for reference, uh, EK is about 0 0.6. Uh, 
a lot of the CLCs start getting to the area where they're so dense on the fin pitch at like 0 0.12, uh, 0 0.14, something like that, that you actually end up having a bit of impedance on the pump. And for the flow rate, you're looking at something in the range of 35 to 60 liters uh, per minute, average for a closed loop liquid cooler at the high end 60 for a max RPM. And for the GPU on the Corsair unit today, it's about 50 liters per minute. So it's 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 fine. It's in there. Uh, we, we do need to do some testing, obviously. But we have been told and haven't validated, but we've been told by uh, some pretty good engineers formerly from EK who now work at Corsair that the temperature difference is in the range of about two degrees versus GPU blocks from EK or about 1.52 degrees for the CPU blocks. So it's really small differences. Uh, and then the approach here is high quantity, lower price and semi-modular. So the cold plate can be lifted out. We have shots of that as well of the GPU. That makes it a bit more modular so it can be placed into other GPU blocks. The cold plate doesn't presently cover the entire TU-102 die, which is a shortcoming, but uh, should be good enough um, in theory, at least what we're told, and we'll look more into that later. But um, micro fins uh, can be pulled out and then just placed into any GPU block depending on the demand, which is actually a really clever approach to reducing the, uh, the total uh, I guess the, the issues with production runs on water cooling parts because you can just target whatever's popular at the time. Uh, there are two different approaches to nickel plating on these. There's chemical nickel plating on the cold plate for a thinner um, plating so it doesn't have quite as much thickness once you actually apply the nickel plate to the uh, copper so that doesn't um, create a bunch of impedance issues by effectively increasing the thickness of the fins. And I think that covers most of the basics. now. There's some more information too on coolant and what we're told is and need to validate this. We have the ability to though and I've collected enough information but what we're told is that apparently the main concern from Corsair, whether it's a manufactured concern or a legitimate one we'll look into, is that the coolant on the market, a lot of it will uh, slowly like crack the acrylic and blocks and so Corsair is using a different material. It's like a transparent nylon I guess uh, instead of just a straight acrylic. So how much that matters? Not sure today, but it's an interesting marketing point and one that we'll continue when we get home. I think that covers it for the Corsair Open Loop components. Thank you for watching. As always, subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Subscribe for more coverage at the show. Sorry about the noise here. I'll see you all next time.